welcome everybody to another edition of the Crochet Crowd. My name is Mikey and I'm joining my friends today over at Bernat.com. We're doing a combination project where I'm showing you how to make these beautiful appliques. See this gorgeous pillow? You can just upgrade little things like this. This is just already a stylish pillow, but just push it up a whole nether level by using your crochet skills in order to give it some kind of accent. What we're going to be doing is making this particular applique that you see. We are going to use the Bernat Handy Crafter thread. You only need two colors, so you only, if you want to do like combinations of different kind of pillows, you can order more yarn for that. But we have a, a one color on the inside, another color on the outside, and I'm going to show you how easy it really is to be able to do a project just like so. So stay tuned and let's get started. Looking ahead and you're thinking about your project and you're going to want to apply it to a pillow or you could just use this as a doily on top of your table. You can do many different things with this. On this particular pillow I'm just going to slow, uh, slide a little crochet hook in behind and just show you that there's nowhere that it's attached to the pillow on the inside circle here. And when I go to do it on the other side you will notice that I've just run into a seam right up here. This is where it's attached. You can't even see it. And it's attached all the way around already. And you're going to notice that there's a fundamental difference between this pillow and the next pillow because you'll notice that this gray area is stretched. So let me show you the next pillow just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So looking at the second pillow here you're going to notice I'm going to put on my crochet hook and you'll notice it's not attached in the center and it's also not attached within the brown it's only attached around the ring on the outside and you'll notice that the brown area looks a little more full and a little more thicker and that's I think because it's only fastened on the outside and the inside is not forced to have been stretched like the other one so either way you have choices on how you want your applique to look when putting it on a pillow to prove this is a versatile product, this is what it looks like before it gets applied to anything. You can see that it's still just as lovely. The detail in the center is just as fantastic. So you can use this as a tabletop centerpiece very easily if you didn't feel like wanting to apply it to anything else. The doily pillow appliques were done by one of these four colors. These two were put together and so were these two put together. Bernat Handicrafter has many different colors so you don't still have to limit yourself to the creativity that you see here on camera. If you want to duplicate what you're finding online, this here is called Robust Red. We have Misty Gray, we have Loyal Blue, as well as we have Dark Mocha. The pattern is calling for a 1.75 millimeter crochet hook, but you should be aware today that I'm using a 2.0 so that I can teach you a little bit easier here on camera, but it also if 1.75 millimeter is a little bit too small for you, you can also substitute 2.0 if it makes it easier for you to complete. In the more information or description of this video, you're going to find a link for the written directions for this particular pattern. What I normally just do is I just print it off and then I just take a highlighter and I just highlight my way through so that I make sure that I don't skip any steps along the way. And that's just a quick little tip. So now let's begin to work on this doily together. To start, we need to create a slip knot. We're just going to wrap it around our finger twice, just like so. I'm just pinching it down with my fingers here. And this is the back, this is the forward, this is how I remember. I take the back over the forward, and now the new one that's in the back, and I push it up over my finger, just like that. And I slip in my really small crochet hook. And I just want to pull that snug. So the first step we need to do is chaining of eight. So this first one here never counts as one. So let's just chain eight. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we now want to join this. This is the very center of our applique and we want to join that with the ring. So we're just going to slip our hook into the very first stitch, grab the material that's coming from the yarn ball, pulling it through and through, like so. And so now we have our finished ring. And this is the straggler. We want to pay attention to that next because we're going to bury that within our next line as we go around. So now we're going to begin the next round. And this is the straggler here. And we want to pay attention to that because we want to trap that in within this line as well. Automatically just chain up four. So one, two, three, and four. And I want you to double crochet yourselves into the center of this ring. And what I need you to do then after that is chain one and then double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we just continue to do that all the way around. Okay, so I'm just now double crocheting and as promised you're now going to chain one 
and then we want to double crochet again and see how you're putting that straggler on the top of that ring there so that it gets trapped in a position so you can safely cut that after you've done this rotation you're not worried about it, this project falling apart chaining one in between each of the double crochets and I need you to double crochet yourselves 15 times all the way around and the very first chain counts as one therefore it will be a total of 16 and make sure that you chaining one in between each so let's meet up at the end of this rotation and we'll just double count and we'll move on to the next step so here's where we are and I want you to make sure you double count to make sure we have the right stitch now the first one here okay you'll see that it's almost like spokes or like on a bicycle and what we have here is that we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen you have to make sure after the sixteenth double crochet you're going to chain one before slip stitching it to the third chain when you started okay so to slip stitch you just put your hook in wrap the material and just pull through and through and now we're going to move on to your next step from this point in the next rotation we're going to be playing with the spaces that are in between the stitching that you just did okay so where we chained one is where we're going to be playing if we automatically start where I am right now you're going to see that we're not in between okay so it's saying that we just need to slip stitch so we go to the very first space that you've seen pull through and through and so now we've just moved ourselves over so now that we are truly in a new space so now we have to chain up five one two three four and five we automatically jump over the next double crochet that you see down here and just immediately jump into the gap that's right beside it and we just want to double crochet so we're just going right into a gap we're not going into any stitching and we just want to double crochet we now want to chain two again so one and two and we're going to pull to the next gap okay so double crochet chaining two and then we go to the next gap that you can find and we want to do that all the way around and when you're finished this rotation or finish the last double crochet make sure you chain two before actually slip stitching it together but we'll meet back up in just a second where we'll show you how to do that and move you to the next step so here's where we are and you want to make sure that you have 16 as your rotation all the way around so you want to make sure that each post there's 16 of them so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 and remember what I said on the last double crochet make sure you are chaining two just to maintain the pattern before slip stitching it to the third one the third chain in the very beginning so just pull through and through. Now if the actual straggler is getting on your nerves, I haven't addressed that yet, you'll see that it's just popping out there. Just grab your fancy dancy scissors. You can just trim it nicely and get rid of that so then it just becomes out of your way and easier to work with. We now want to move up to your next step here and we're just going to chain one and now we want to use one single crochet and three double crochet and one single crochet into each one of these gaps that are around the outside so we immediately just want to slip our hook into a gap so not a stitch into the next gap so one single crochet three double crochet okay and then one single crochet again right into the gap so you actually have a total of five stitches all within each gap now and this is what's really going to separate the center out to being really quite gorgeous we now just automatically want to jump to the next gap for just go right into the next one for one single crochet three double crochets and then finish it with one single crochet and just keep repeating that all the way around we'll be back up in a second and we'll move you to the next step so we're moving along pretty good now and you can start seeing that the center is starting to pull together beautifully and we just want to make sure we get that last one in. I'm always one to start you on a rotation as well as finish you on a rotation so that you understand where you are in the project so that you can follow along with me as easily as possible. So this is the three double crochet, we're going to single crochet and what we want to just do at the end is that we just want to join with the slip stitch so we're just going to join it with a slip stitch with the beginning 
and this is where we chained up one to start with and we just want to join it so that it's all together all the way around. So now let's move on to your next step. So let's review where we are in the project. We've just finished round number three right there and we're moving up to round number four and round number four is going to have clusters just like you see and they have a very three-dimensional very um, defining point within this doily so far. So here's where we left off and our clusters are actually at the top of each one of these peaks. So we're now noticing that we're not at the top right now, we're quite in between two peaks. So what the pattern's asking for us to do is just to slip stitch by moving ourselves over. So we're just going to go to the next stitch, just go in, pull through that stitch, and through. So that was one, and we want to do it a second time so that we're on the very top of that peak. Okay, so now it's asking us to chain three. So let's begin to do that. So one, two, and three. And it's saying to do four double crochets into the same spot as the slip stitch is where we started from. So we're just going to double crochet coming right underneath where we slipped it. And we're going to do that four times. So one, two, try that again, <laughs> three, And four. So in actual fact, the chaining of the three in the beginning was actually counts as five, so there's actually five in between. But you will notice that it's not cluster looking, is it? So what it's asking you to do is to drop the loop like that, slip your hook into the beginning top of the chain where you started with. Okay, so just in the top, grab that loop again, so grab it and pull it through there. Okay, we can try that one more time. So going in, grab the loop and pull through. So I find this a little awkward, but the overall result is actually really quite stunning. And we want to pull that tight. And that's how you get that cluster, just like that. Okay, so now we want to begin to chain five. So there's chaining five in between each one of these clusters. So let's try that again. So one, two, three, four and five and we just want to look for the very top one okay it's the top one just like that and we want to double crochet five times into the top of the very next piece that's in the bottom so that was one two three four and five, and just like we did before, drop that loop like that, go into the very beginning one where you started, this is the first double crochet of that cluster, just go in the top, grab that loop, and pull that loop through. Okay, and now we want to chain five again. So one, two, three, four, and five, and again, just look for the center one, or count it if you wish and just put in five double crochets and then cluster it up that was not a double crochet so wrapping it uh, go in so do five double crochets cluster it like I showed you and then chain five and I want you to do that in each one of these as you work your way around so let's meet up at the end of this rotation just finished up the last cluster and we do want to chain our five right after we've done that as well right so one two three four and five and we want to join it then to the beginning of where we started and that's the top of the cluster that you see make sure you actually get it into a stitch just make sure that it goes in and through so you can see that round took a little bit of extra time, but you can see it's undeniable and how great that really is. So now the next uh, one we want to do is I want to show you where we are in the project because I want to show you what you're going to be doing because this next round may not make any sense to you. So let's review that 
Next. Let's review where we are in the project. And right here is the clusters that we just did. This is the chaining of five that are attached. Now this whole section here is actually two rows away. So the next row that we have to do is actually just a loop that is stabilizing all of this whole section. So in the next round, what we're doing is we're just creating the loop that is attaching to each one of the middles as we go around. So let's begin that next. I'm going to slip stitch three times onto this particular line. So I'm just going to grab it and pull through, grab it and pull through, and grab it and pull through. And the reason so now let's begin and we're going to do a chaining of eight and then we're going to single crochet it down and then chaining of eight single crocheting it down. So let's do that. So we're just going to chain eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we just want to go to the next gap area. Just wrap it right underneath into the gap. We don't have to look for a stitch and just single crochet into position. And then we want to chain eight again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we just look for the next gap and we just come in right underneath and single crochet that into position. So just keep doing that all the way around. We'll meet back up and we'll start the next rotation. So we're just finishing up and we want to make sure we are slip stitching to the very start and this is the bottom of where we slip stitch. Remember we slip stitch three and then we started we wanted to slip stitch right to the bottom of that and we're just going to slip in our hook. So make sure you actually get into a stitch and not just the gap. I'm going through and through. So I want to now review with you the next uh, major one on the pillow and we can show you what you have to do next because this here is the under layer to the next row. So let's review where we are in the project. We're now going to complete this beautiful areas right here. There's 13 stitches in between this whole section. One single crochet, two half double crochet, seven double crochet, two half double crochet, and one single crochet. So just remember one single crochet, one single crochet, two half doubles, two half doubles with seven double crochets in between. And if you just kind of remember that what you're doing on one side of it, you're just doing it on the other. So let me show you what we have to do in order to complete that next. We now want to move and do this whole section and each section has a lot of stitches in it. There's 13. This is a slower round but this round is absolutely gorgeous. We need to automatically move to the gap the first one and just slip stitch over one. Okay, so just wrapping it through and through and now we just do a chain one. Okay, so we're just going to chain one and that is where we're going to slip stitch it when we put everything back when we come back around. We now wanted to do one single crochet, so let's begin so, so actually one single crochet, so we're not going to wrap, we're just going to come right underneath one single crochet, two half double crochet, so we wrap going in, you got three on your hook, pull through all three, so we need to do two of those. And now we have to do seven double crochets, so wrap, I'm just going to count them as I go, so that's one, two, three, four, Five. I'm just going to pull that out there. I actually got in between a ply and not the actual thing. So that was five. I just want to make sure that five. We have six. And we have seven. And now we want to begin to get it smaller again. So we just do two half double crochets again. So just through all three loops. Okay. And then we just want to finish this off with a single crochet right at the very bottom part. So that's how you're doing that. So we just automatically jump to the very next one. So we just go inside and do one single crochet. Helps if I have my hook turned the right way. And then two half double crochets. So we're just repeating what we've just done. Two half double crochets. 
and now seven double crochets. So I'll count that out again. So one, two, three, I'm going to repeat number three again. <laughs> three. So I just do three. We got four. We got five. So six. And seven, and we got. And now we're going to make it smaller again, so two half double crochets. And then we're going to finish it off with a single crochet. And just keep repeating what I'm just showing you here all the way around. We'll meet back up in the end. This is the last time we're going to be using this color before we switch it to the next. So we're now back all the way around, and you can see that took a quite a long time, but isn't this looking great? It's really, really looking well. So remember when I said that we chained up one in the very beginning when we did the slip stitch, and that is exactly where we're going to be slip stitching it when we come back around. Okay, so just slip and slip. And we are now officially done with this color, so let's uh, begin to fasten this off. So just grabbing your scissors. And I just want to use the hook, and I just want to pull up on the hook. And this helps it tie on to itself. And I just want to kind of just slip in my hook to another stitch, pulling it through, and then grabbing the material again and just pulling it like this, and it will just tie a knot onto itself. And you just kind of want to, just working it in nicely, because you don't want to see where you're stopping and starting when you're working with this particular project. Okay, so I got it in there enough times and I want to just cut that nice and short. And you can always refine this later, so if you left a little bit too much on there, you can always fix it later. You and will I notice that each one of these is attached by three parts. So you have one, two, and three, one, two, and three. But you will notice here that two are joining into one, one by itself, and then two are joining into one. And I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to create that effect. So let's do that next. Grabbing your next color, let's create a slip knot and let's wrap it around our finger like I showed you in the beginning. Remember the back of your hand, the forward, taking it over the forward and now grabbing the new back one up and over, slipping our crochet hook and we want to fasten it to the beginning of this particular thing. So it doesn't matter where you actually start and stop, so I actually can't even tell where I stopped and started on this, which doesn't really matter anyway. What we need to do is that we need to grab into the center of the double crochets that we have. So you might have to count this out. So I got one, two, three. These are the three double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And so I just want to kind of look at it. You can cheat. Nobody told you this, and you never heard this from me, but you can cheat a little bit. Just look for the very top peak, and that'll be the one that you're going to want to start with. And so we're just now going to fasten it on. Okay. So we're just going to pull through and through, down. so I don't have to see that again, so I can just safely trim that later. And what we want to do now is that we want to chain one, and we want to single crochet into the same spot. So just right underneath, and we just want to single crochet, and this is going to act where we're going to do the slip stitch at the end of this particular rotation. So let me try that again. Okay, so now we want to chain six. So I'm going to let that straggler fall out of position. Followed. Okay, so we want to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now the pattern is asking, is telling you to miss the next two double crochets. So we just look over one and two, miss the next two, and we want to double crochet the third one but we also want to do the one that's on the other side as well at the same time so watch this so we're just going to wrap that skip over one two go into the third and we're going to double crochet so going in and pulling through but now this is where I was getting hung up you need to pull this okay you need to give it some slack okay and we're just going to pull through the two okay so you got slack on there so what we want to do next time 
is that we want to look over here and go to one, two, and three. And we want to double crochet that over as well. And we want to pull that and give that some slack. Okay. And then we want to pull through the two. And then we're just going to pull through all three loops together. Do you see that? See how simple that was? So one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay, is what's joining you in between everything. And now we're just looking for the very center one, or you can count over to the third one. So one, two, and three. Okay, and we want to single crochet that into position. Okay, and now we want to do six again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're just going to either look over so we can count one, two, and three. So just double crochet to the third one over. Sometimes just putting your finger on the stitch just to hold it from sliding when you're doing this kind of thing is a lot easier. Okay, we're just going to double crochet. We want to give it some slack. So just pull up on it and pull through the two only. And now we just want to go over here. So one, two, and three. So I'm starting at the very bottom. But so one, two, and three. Going in, pulling it through, give it some slack, pull through two only. And now you have three left on your hook and pull through. Do you see that? Does that make a lot of sense? So remember, so six middle, six to the side with joining just like I just showed and then six. Okay, and do that all the way around. We'll meet back up and we'll move you to the next one. We're now coming up to the end and we're just gonna do our chaining of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we want to slip stitch it to where you did the chaining of one, or to the single crochet when you started. Just like that, nice and easy. And this will be uh, finish this round. I want to bring you back to the pillow because I want to show you what you need to do because rows 8, 9, and 10 are exactly identical. And I just want to make sure that you're going to start them off properly. So let's do that next. We're now looking at rows number 8, 9, and 10. This is number 7 that we just finished, you can tell. So we're going 8, 9, and 10. You're noticing that every time they're attaching to each other, they're always in the middle. Okay, so it's going up in the middle no matter which one it is. And we need to pay attention to that because where we're stopping and starting on each rotation matters because when we're, whenever we slip stitch to a final, you're always going to end up in a middle piece somewhere. So we always have to make sure we're slip stitching a little bit in order to get back to the middle. So let me show you how to do that next. So 8, 9, and 10 are actually very, very simple. And as you can see, we're now in between the gaps. And what we need to do to, when we're starting another rotation, we actually have to get to the middle section part okay so what they're saying is to slip stitch in each of the three uh, chains six so one two three four five and six we just go in automatically to the next gap so right in and we're going to single crochet so one two three four five and six going into the next gap right in in for a single crochet and I want you to do that all the way around and we're going to slip stitch back uh, to the beginning and then start up row number nine. So this is row number eight. So let's keep moving on that one. I'm now finishing up row number eight and I just want to slip stitch it to the beginning where we started. Okay, so this is where we moved over. So we want to go right underneath to where we started the first chain of six to go. Okay, we might want to make sure we do get into a stitch and not just around there. Okay, so now we're going to uh, move up to row number nine, and you will notice that we're back in between the two sections again, so we have to move ourselves over. So we're just going to just slip stitch it three, and then we just want to chain six again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we just want to go to the next gap over. Go over. 
over for a, a single crochet. And now we're just going to go around again, and this will be row number nine, or round number nine. We're now finishing up row number nine, and again, we want to do the same thing is that we want to slip stitch it to the base of where we started the chain six. So we're just going in, through, and through. And again, we're now in between two spots, so we want to move ourselves over. So again, just slip stitch it three. three. And now chaining six again, and I want you to go for the last rotation. And this will be the last rotation all the way around, uh, doing the same thing. And then we have row number 11, which is probably the, the most time-consuming of this entire project. and But it is our last one, and you're going to see how fabulous this project is going to end up being. So let's finish row number 10, and then we'll get on with the good stuff. We're now finishing up row number 10, and row number 10 is not the same finishing as what we've been doing, so watch this. So we actually have one more gap to go, so we're going to do that. So we got this gap, and then we got a slip stitch, but watch what I'm going to do. We're going to chain 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, I'm going to go into the very last gap shown for a single crochet, and now Normally, what I would normally do is chain six and then slip. Okay, but I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And now I want to double crochet myself to where we actually did the slip knot or the slip stitch when we did that. Okay, so let's go over here where we did the chaining of six. And we want to do a double crochet just like that. Okay, so that will finish off this uh, particular round number 10, and now let's move along to row number 11. I want to explain some things before we get to that level, so let's do that next. In row number 11, on our final, we're actually going to be doing these picots. I mean, we have a small picot, large, and small. But if you look really carefully, you can see that there's actually three stitches, or sorry, four stitches, one, two, three, and four. The picots are on the first three, and then the final one is just a double crochet and then we just reached. So here's where we are. We just finished the double crochet, okay, like we just uh, did. And now it says for row number 11, we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And it says to skip over, miss the next single crochet, which is down here, okay. And we now want to start playing in the outside gaps, okay, in the outside loops, just like that. So it says one double crochet. So we're going to one double crochet around in the gap. And now it says to do one small um, picot. And the small picot consists of five. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. And to do a picot, what I want you to just do is really get in there and look. And you can see that there's two strings that are looking right at you there. And I want you to grab the string so coming from the yarn ball and just pull it through there and through the other one. And this creates like a pico to happen. The next stitch is a double crochet, so let's double crochet again. And now it says to do a large pico, and the large pico is consisting of, of seven chains instead of five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, and now we're gonna do a pico again, so we're just gonna go down to where it started, okay? I know it's kind of hard to see, but you're just going to go down in. Okay, you'll get two strings on there. Pull that through and through. Okay, so the next one is another double crochet, and this is going to be a small pico on the top of this one. Okay, so we just did that. So a small pico is five. So we have five, seven, and five if you have to remember. So one, two, Oops. Two, three, four, five. And now let's do a pico. So we're just going to come down and just slide it in between. Make sure we keep that on. Slide it in between. You'll see two strings. Pulling it through and through. And so the final double crochet in this gap is just a regular double crochet. There's no pico on the top of it. Do you see that? So let's begin this again. I'm going to show you it one more time. So we're just going to double crochet into the first, into the next gap, just like you see. And on top of this one, it's going to be a small picot. So it's going to be five. One, two, three, 
4 and 5 and to do a pico we just slide it in just like that coming through and through the next double crochet that goes around in is going to have a 7 pico it's going to have a large pico on the top so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and now coming down through and through. Now the next one, double crochet, it's the third one. There's always there's only going to be four stitches in each one. And this will have a five in the top. So that'll be a pico of five. It's a small one. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Pulling it through and through. And then the final, which is the fourth stitch in the gap, will just be a regular double crochet, and then we'll just immediately jump to the next one. So that's how you're just going to go all the way around. So do that, and we'll meet back up, and this project is then considered finished once we've done just join it together. And then finally the last double crochet in, and now we're just going to attach this to the very one over here. So we just want to stretch over, just come up underneath it, and do a slip stitch in, and in and voila you've gone all the way around let's cut this material with your fancy dancy Westcott scissors and then we want to pull that up so it kind of ties a knot onto itself and just kind of come underneath it and just tie a few more knots onto itself I like the crochet thread for that because you can tie really good decent knots without actually having it to show Okay, and I just want to weave that space or that particular one in a few more times, and then I can just cut it safely. So let me just do that one more time to another spot, and now I can cut that. And I'm just going to look at the red section. Did I have anything going out? This is where I started with the gray. We can safely cut that off too. And go a little closer than that. And voila, you've now just completed your applique. So now to finish this to the pillow, all you just need to do is just pin this down. So just go on one side to the other, just start pinning it down, and then cover it with a damp cloth and leave that cloth on to dry onto your pillow. And then what you're just going to do now is then sew. And what that damp cloth is going to do, it's actually going to form this so that it actually wants to sit down a lot easier uh, when you're going through the sewing process. On behalf of Bernat.com and the Crochet Crowd.com, I am your host, Mikey, and thank you for joining me today and good luck and enjoy this fabulous pillow doily project until next time i'll see you